Uh, welcome back to the Test Talks YouTube channel. So we are here again talking about development and our last video we spoke about hidden costs. But we're going to talk about something that you mentioned at the end of that one, which is the cost of finance. Because, you know, I think, let's say you bought a site and it had, I don't know, some houses on that were cash flowing and you were going to build on the rest of it. You could maybe cover your costs with the income from there. But what if, you know, it's your, I don't know, first or second development, it's just land, there's nothing on this site that is an asset mm. to generate income, you've got some finance to pay, maybe monthly, maybe at the end. Um, like, how, what does the cost of finance look like on a land development? How do you deal with it? How is it structured? How, tell me everything, just tell me everything. <laughs> All right, so, so uh, it, it's a big world, right? And, mm. and there's a reason why we've got sort of a multitude of finance brokers and people out in the industry offering you various different ways of, of cutting development finance. It, it, it's, it's, you know, obviously there's always a balance between how much you as the developer are going to put in, how you're going to raise the different tranches, and, and we talked about risk and reward. That, you know, in this case, the risk and reward of the person lending you the money equals the amount of return that they get through interest rates and fees and everything else. So traditional development finance, um, you know, involves you putting in, you know, a, a fair sum of the money, we call it senior debt or... or, or uh, in return for the you know a good bulk of the 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 cost of the development um at a relatively low rate so you know five six percent mm. if they're lending you even more obviously naturally their risk profile goes up so if they're lending you 75 to 80 percent of the costs that will go up so so as that happens there's more fees involved usually there's entry fees exit fees um, the interest rate will probably be around, let's say, seven, eight, nine, it could, depending on where you are. They'll also take into account your experience as a developer as well. Um, and, and, you know, the more experience, the better the rates. So, so again, because it all equates to risk on their behalf. So, so, so there's, that's the sort of the senior world. But, but in general, obviously, most developers are trying to put as little money in there as possible. Yep. So, so I think... Uh, when, when, you, when you're trying to do that, it's all about finding you know, a lender who, who is very upfront with what they're going to charge. They, mm -hmm. they, they're going to partner with you to some degree. Uh, because, you know, and I think the reason I mentioned it in the previous one, one of the hidden costs of development, and I think one of the things that people undershoot significantly, is the cost of finance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got, you've got to finance the land. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you already own the land and it's unencumbered, that's a really positive thing. Yeah. If, if, if you're in that lucky position, but a business like us, we, we buy the land and, and then we, we, we have the development finance, which obviously as Kevin goes through the development at different stages, we will draw that, that money down and start to pay the interest on it. But, mm -hmm. So it's, it's that last bit that makes it actually quite hard to predict the total cost of financing. Mm -hmm. And then when you have coronavirus come along right in the middle of your uh, mm -hmm. process, once you're at almost full loan mm. uh, and, and stop you selling for, for three months then uh, you, you really start to feel the impact of what all of this can, can come you know three months of, of a delay can, can cost quite a lot of money mm. yeah and I think in terms of like we spoke about risk before as well and we talked about unknown costs and, and I think the finance is a huge risk because time is what is really important so when you when you start a project we've spoken before about you're going to make your profit at the beginning so before you start on the job, that's when you've got to get it all ready to go. So that's, that's, that's the profit section before you start on site. Once you get on site, this is just a revenue play, so you're just going to run the development. And, and what's going to really cost you money is if, if the development starts running over. Because right at the end is when you're paying the most of your interest. Of course. So at, at the beginning, you're, you're paying a small amount, you've only done a small amount of work, so you've only drawn a small amount of money down. But slowly your interest is building up. So once you get to the end, it's really costing you a lot of money. So if you're running over by four weeks, that could be 20, 30,000 pounds. So if you can save that four weeks before you even start, yeah. and, and it only costs you two or 3,000 pounds, suddenly you're, you're 27,000 pounds better off. But people yeah. forget that, they're really excited. They, you know, we've yeah. done it. We're really excited, we want to get going on the development. You haven't made all your decisions, but I'm sure I can make them on the way through. And suddenly you're working without clarity, 
and then time starts expanding and time's going to cost you a lot of money. And are you paying interest monthly, rolled up, retained, how does it normally work? So we're always rolled up to the end, okay. yeah. Okay, so monthly to, month to month the costs of interest are not there, which obviously makes it a lot easier. The cost of interest are there, but you're not paying them out, that's the thing. Okay, so it's costing you money, but you're, you're not actually, you're you're not feeling the pain. Okay, if they, it's a hidden cost. If like, they were uh, saying to you, right, I, I want yeah. £20,000 this month, you'd be like, bloody hard to work Saturdays and Sundays. <laughs> like, this is really hurting. Yeah. But exactly, it's a hidden cost. You get to the end and you start adding it up and you think, yeah. wow, I want, I want to be a bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, when it comes to financing these, these kind of deals, you know, with, you know, I've heard of kind of 100% funding, whether it's crowdfunding to do the deposit or whether it's open market value bridging on the uplift. Anything funky like this, is it real? Does it happen if you used it? So, I mean, you do hear a lot of different things and I think personally I've been exploring all different avenues. I think one of the things that it really comes down to is, is that a lot of these things sound as though they work in principle. But when you actually take them forward and try and piece the things together, there's always things in there that, that don't quite, you know, marry up, mm. such as, a, you know, doing something in combination with a traditional development fund or a senior, senior debt provider, right? They won't accept a lot of these, these, these nuanced things. Yeah. They, they want to see a developer is always putting hard cash into a deal. And I think Kevin mentioned that in one of the previous mm. videos. There are definitely ways of doing it, and of course you can structure things such as you're in a, you know, you're in a combined equity community with investors and people like that, but, but this whole sort of notion of 100% finance is, is a very difficult one, and our business particularly, you, you know, we, we, we often have several hundreds of, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of planning game in a deal already. So that, that, the way we always tend to look at things is to say, well, look, we've just spent a year, two years creating a huge amount of value. That should be our deposit. But ultimately, yeah. actually, it doesn't even work that way. Even when you're running a business like us, where we're adding a huge amount of value, we're de-risking it. There is also, there's so many different facets within what a lender will see as risk. Mm. That is not you think it's just you put the money in and the market will do this or it'll do that and mm. and then they're saying well no but they also need to look at you know who are you as a developer what's your flight risk so to speak mm. um, you know what happens if 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 you just get tired and retire what you know there's so many yeah, what yeah. ifs that it's not quite as black and white as you think you know when you first come at these things so I think when we look at these more creative things. Um, you know, for example, crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is not, in my experience, isn't actually that dissimilar to, to any other form of development funding. It just means that they get the money from the crowd. Crowdfunding to do equity, that's interesting. I mean, that's something that we, you could explore. But obviously, equity is, is an expensive part of, of the finance stack, right? So, yeah. so, so, you know, it would be interesting to, to, to see that. But, but again, you put, try and put that equity in and none of your own money the senior lender will be asking questions. So, so it's just nuances of, of, you know, you can be creative and we have been creative with, with the way in which we fund and finance things, but, but don't rely on it and don't assume it's going to work just because you've connected the dots and you think it's going to, because there is a whole level of due diligence that development lenders go through and it's, it's actually scary, the level of, of you know, inspection and, and detail. That they so does it take into. longer? Yes, hugely. I mean, there's no unequivocally the, the getting development funding is is incredibly thorough and painful experience. Yeah, rightly so, I think, and it's yeah. good. Yeah, but I mean, I think some of these um, products that we've looked at before, like a hundred percent, where a, a, a fund is going to give you a hundred percent, they want a, a huge share, so they want often they'll want interest plus fifty percent share of the profit. Wow. And then actually, when you start looking at it, you think, well, actually, we're giving away more of the reward but we're taking more of the risks <laughs> yeah. and then you look at it and you think well who's the best at funding here probably them and so they've put together this package which is really going to suit them which doesn't really suit us so well so i think it can be quite attractive to kind of head towards that but sometimes we, we, we've looked at it before like, let's put the brakes on a little bit let's find out what's going on there is is that something you want to step into and for our model it doesn't really work